Do you remember working on Walking in My Shoes? Yeah. <laughs> what was that like? I think the result of it is incredible. I I have to say, I mean, I'm really proud that I was around um, and to be part of doing that. But there were lots of different versions of it. I think all those, all those songs, uh, there were different versions of them. We're talking about, you know, Songs like the devotion. <clears throat> there are lots of different versions um, before, you know, Alan and Flood in particular, and Martin, obviously, you know, with all the guys, you know, would then go, okay, that's it. You know, that okay, we, we've got the focus. Or sometimes, you know, like Rush, for example, one of the songs on Songs like the devotion. I mean, that it was a more difficult song, I, th- I found, for them to try and find you know, the correct execution for it, but we got there in the end. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, other songs came together really quickly. But Walking In My Shoes, this is a great track, you know. It's a great song. You know, you play it on a guitar, the melody line and the, and the lyrics are just great. So, you know, you'd, you'd have to be a bit of a muppet to mess it up. <laughs> um, um, but um, I can't say it was, was, was the easiest of the songs to work on, but you just got to keep going. What was it about the song that made it more challenging to record? I can't really say, really. I, I just think it, you, they're, they're trying. You know, you, I mean, I, li- I like to think that you know, I spent a lot of time working with Alan. I spent you know a bit of time working with Flood, but I'm not in their heads. Um, and the the vision and the emotion that they wanted for the song, um, they knew when they'd got it right. And it just took a few goes, and that's sometimes that happens. You know, you're not you don't walk into studio and walk out at the end of the day going right. Well, I got that. We got that sorted. <laughs> it's over. It doesn't happen like that. When it does, it's fantastic. You know, um, I mean, again, it's well documented. The vocal takes that were done in Spain with Dave on Condemnation were some of his best vocals, I think. And immediately that we we'd done those vocals, everyone went, yeah, that's it. You know, we don't need to do this again. That's cool. Um, so um, just on a know. technical level, like just if you remember which gear you used or how many takes you did, like technically, what was it like recording Walking In My Shoes, if you remember that kind of stuff? Well, I mean, I, I think it's easier if it's a general oversight of, of, of what we did when we, when we went to Spain. Basically, they decided to hire this villa mm-hmm. in Madrid. I remember Flood sent me, uh, we didn't have emails in, so it was, it was the fax. He sent me a fax That's cool. <laughs> with the layout of, 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 you know, it was on kind of three levels. We got together in London and, you know, kind of pulled over the plans of this thing. And I went, right, okay, well, if we get a long, you know, long enough cable so we can record in the garage and if we put, a, you know, double windows in the middle of this huge room, then we can use half of it as a live room, half of it as a, um as the control room and mm-hmm. you know, let, let have enough things around us so that the facilities being in a, in a, in a house in spain didn't limit what they were trying to do and it worked so we ended up cut long story short so we ended up hiring a rehearsal studio in london and i was like right okay we're gonna set everything up in this rehearsal room it wasn't totally don't get me wrong it wasn't totally my decision but i was there mm-hmm. But we can set everything up in in this in this room and make sure we got everything. <laughs> because That's cool. you know, if we're a couple of mic cables short or you know, we've forgotten something or MIDI cable short or whatever, um, we just to make sure it's all gonna work. So we it was analog tape machine at the time. So we rigged everything up, it all worked, stuck it in boxes, it all went out to Spain, we set it up in the house. Miraculously it all worked. Um, and the band came out, I think three, four days later after the studio had been set up. And um, so we had some, you know, great help. Um, I didn't do it all on my own um, to, to set the room up. But it was just, you know, it was more we trying to create an environment that was slightly different to what they'd done before. Uh, and being a, a flood had just done that on Baby. So he come out again of you know a semi makeshift studio environment and he thought well you know that approach might work for a period of time with the pest you know all the songs would 
were recorded in that way. So we had a rack of, of you know, some effects. Uh, there was the Atari computer, 24-track tape machine, mm-hmm. uh, a Soundcraft console, bunch of mics, bunch of leads. And we was like, right, let's make a record. That's awesome. The, pian- the piano sound on... Um, it might have even been Walking in My Shoes, actually. I can't remember. But we had... It was a little, you know, dictaphone tape machine. And... Um, I, I can't remember uh, why we we ended up recording it. But anyway, we ended up recording this bit, uh, or maybe it was off the demo. I, I can't remember. But I remember that the, 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 the batteries were a bit low. Okay. So it kind of played a little bit weird. And obviously, if you shook it, it did this vibrato sound. And uh, so we're in there. And we, I mean, I don't know how it all started. It was like, oh, that sounds cool. Well, okay, let's record it. So literally, you've got a microphone. You know, and and they, there's your tape record. There's the you know the dictaphone. There's the microphone. It's dying, 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 you know, we were kind of doing this. <laughs> That's cool. And um, then we sample it and mm-hmm. put it in and pitch it correctly. And you know, I remember doing a bit of that. Yeah, bass as well. I remember hitting the bass with a, you know, those um the the, the elongated batteries. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't remember what yeah, those things and with a bit of tape on it, like banging the bass strings and you know uh, the classic one of of. Um, running a, a, a drumstick over the, the piano chords, making this kind of cacophony of sound and something. It did all kinds of stuff. I'm um, sending things in through. I was a big fan of that. You know, we always had like you know two or three amps running, um, so I could send. We had a Roland um, that had a reverb on it, and I remember using that for drums. And re-recording the drums through through that, I mean, there's all kinds of bits and pieces. That's so cool. I mean, was that that experimental vibe? Was that something that was like prevalent throughout the sessions you worked on with Depeche Mode? Oh, definitely. That's so cool. I, I would say I would say that it it was slightly more on songs of Lake and devotion because, uh, as I say, with Violator, the bare bones of a lot of that stuff. Um, it's difficult to to say because it depends on the song, but uh, you know maybe forty to sixty percent of certain songs was already done. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them we did a bit of tweaking, did some vocals a lot, you know, and then we you know reworked policy of truth and we you know did, um, enjoy the silence again. You know we were talking about it earlier, but obviously with with songs like devotion, we started from scratch. We didn't have anything, so it was like right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have fun with this one. I think one of the first things we did when we got to Spain, I remember, I think it was in your room. Okay. And it was, okay, Flood said, get a good drum sound. It was like, okay. So I would set up the, set up the drums in the live room and um, I had, uh, you know, there's a basement downstairs which I used as a reverb. Mm-hmm. So I had that running off, off, off the drums. And so uh, that was one of the first things we did actually. That's so cool. So, what was that process like for that particular song? Do you, what was it like working on in your room? It was cool. I mean, you know, similarly to, to the others, a bit of experimentation. Um, the the bass riff at the beginning has a, I think, two delays on it, which you know, dong, 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 you know, that kind of effect. Um, I had an even tied three thousand machine amazing thing with all, all kinds of different harmonizers inside it and i was pretty good at that machine so i'd set up all these kind of delays with with um harmonization on it so that when it when he when the delay repeated it would either go down or up in pitch and again the drums were was the loop on that is alan playing mm-hmm. as with most of the songs really that where we use drum loops some of it would start with an idea you know, nick a drum loop from somewhere and think, okay, right, well, we're not going to use that drum loop. We're going to make our own. But that's the bare bones of the idea, you know, which was, again, you know, one of the fun things was, it was you know, it was never never just kind of like, oh, that'll do, you know, that's fine. That sounds all right. No, no, I'm not having that. We're going to make our own. It was interesting. There was a remix done by, uh, who's the guy from Garbage? Um, oh, Bushfig? Uh, Bushfig, yeah. Um, terrible. I should know his name off the top of my head. But anyway, <laughs> that's not good. Um, yeah, he did. He did a, a, a cool remix. There were some interesting things. It's interesting when you hear other people 
kind of rework what you've done and see how they use some of the stuff. Um, I remember Brian Eno did some remixes on Violator. We got a, a DAT from a DAT is a digital little yeah, yeah. set, right? And we got a DAT from you know Brian Eno and, and his engineer of like an hour of of them just running off effects and kind of doing That's bits cool. and <laughs> they take they take um, bits and pieces that you don't necessarily hear in the mix mm-hmm. of, of of policy of truth or, or enjoy the science or something, but. You know, they'd kind of, oh, that sounds good. We'll do that. And then they do all this effecty stuff, which I thought, wow, that's really cool. And and then it was like, okay, Steve, there you go. Right now, listen to that. <laughs> and then make notes of what you think might be usable. You know, and that's what we did. I was like, oh, this bit's really good. And this bit's really good. And then we kind of chop it all together.